Hi, I'm Gail from Bernina of Naperville, and I'm back. Now, don't forget, I just did a video about a couple of days ago using the Bernina 3 Series. It was the 335, and we had our nice linen material, which we stabilized, and I talked about the polyester thread, the um, cotton thread, and the polyester magnifico thread that was trilobal that gave a nice sheen. Well, you want to take those same things that we learned on that video. So before you watch this one, you might want to go back and watch Decorative Stitch Clinic for the 3 Series. However, now I have to tell you something. You are going to fall off your chair when you see the decorative stitches that I'm using here on the Bernina 5 Series. The Bernina 570 Quilters Edition is the one that's here and it has got an amazing array of decorative stitches. In fact, I stitched out this grouping and this is just from one of the banks of stitches. What you see here, it's amazing. And I'm gonna zero in on this a little bit later. There's also stitches on this machine that create little tassels. I just, I mean, I can't wait to stitch this. This is like the cutest thing I've ever seen. But if that's not enough for you, there is even a bank of stitches on this machine dedicated just to Christmas. Now, I'm betting in a couple of years, if we work really hard, we might even get Festivus stitches on this machine. But let's, it's not Christmas yet, but it might be when you do these decorative stitches because it is the gift that keeps on giving see what I did there. Anyway, let's get started. Okay, I'm not going to be using these threads today, but these are our Isocord 40 weight polyester embroidery thread. This is what we use in a lot of our embroidery designs that we stitch out either on our E16 multi-needle machine or our domestic embroidery machines. This is the polyester trilobal polyester, which gives a very nice sheen. And this is cotton, and this is a little bit thicker weight. This is a 40 weight cotton, which is also suitable for embroidery. And the, these stitches, these were stitched out on our Bernina 335. Now the Bernina 335 is a fairly simple machine. Uh, the stitches are what you see and is what you get. You do have the ability to mirror, adjust the stitch length and width and so forth. But these have those different stitches that we've stitched out in the different threads. You can take these principles on to the Bernina 570 or to the four series and the other machines in the line. Now I'm using the Bernina 570 today with some of these really fun stitches that I've just discovered. But if you have a 435, a 475, a 480, 535, please by all means, get cracking on those machines and try some of the techniques that we're doing today. So we're going to start off, the 570 has tons and tons and tons of decorative stitches, and we're going to just explore a few. I want to just show you here, so this is the bank of stitches that are the 1700, and now in this bank of stitches, it goes from right to left here. These are just a few of the stitches that you can find in that selection. And they couldn't all fit on my material, so I had to make another one. But you can see here, these guys are pretty cool. Now, you can see how my thread is changing color. Well, that's because I'm using an Aurafil 50 weight variegated thread. This is 100% cotton. In for a needle, I am using the 75 Schmetz Chrome embroidery needles. Now this decorative stitch clinic is meant for the 435, 475, 480, 535, 570, and 590, and 740, and 770. We're not really going to explore this range of stitches very much. We're going to focus on the squiggle line, and the squiggle line is your decorative stitch bank. Now, I do want to preface this for you. You've got two options in life. If you really are a quilter and you want more space here on the machine in this harp area, you are going to be trading some decorative stitches for space if you go from the 570 to the 770 because our little 570 here is chuck full 
of beautiful decorative stitches. Now you have beautiful decorative stitches on the 740 and the 770 as well. They're just not as many as you see here on this machine. So that's why I think the Bernina 570 makes a perfect little companion for your larger 770 machine. But enough about that. Let's look at what we've got here. I'm going to expand our bank of stitches here so that you can totally see what we're looking at here. So we've got florals, cross stitches, satin stitches, geometrics, heirloom, novelty, tassels. We've got nature and holiday. So let's just look at some of these stitches. So these are all of our little floral stitches and I will just scroll a little bit closer for you so that you can see these. When you want to go down the list and see the stitches, you just press and hold. Now you can see I selected a stitch there. I'm just going to expand that out again, but you really just are going to use your thumb or your finger to just scroll through all of the different stitches. And you can see there's a cactus, there's palm trees, there's all kinds of stuff in this section. And I really would like to encourage you to stitch all of these. Stitch all of these on the material that's pre-stabilized just like I did just so you have a better idea because you can look at these stitches all day long on the machine but you don't really appreciate how beautiful and the detail and everything until you start stitching them out. Here's our cross stitching stitches. The satin stitches. Don't forget with these satin stitches, you most definitely want to make sure that you have enough stabilizer. You might even want to use a little spray starch to stitch these out because these little buggers are wide and can tunnel up your material. Let's look at our geometrics. These are really nice if you're going for like crazy quilt type stitches sewing over some seams for to add a decorative touch. These are the heirloom stitches. This one I've used to make my own entredeau. That's stitch number 701. But the two banks that I would like to play around and focus a little bit more with are the 1101 and the 1701. So we're going to start with the 1701. Now I want to show you this particular stitch right here. To me that looks like an angel wing, like the back of a wing, and I want to show you something super cute that you can do simply with the mirror function on this machine. Then we're going to go in and do a bunch of other kind of fun things. I've selected stitch number 1702 and I'm simply going to stitch this down my pre-stabilized material. You'll also notice that I have foot number 20C on. Foot number 20C, the C means that it's got a coating on the foot that is a wide foot and it tells the machine that it is okay to do a nine millimeter wide stitch. So I've got foot number 20C on and I am going to line my foot right up here at the very beginning of my edge of the raw edge of my material and I'm just simply going to stitch this stitch. And if you need to, you can slow down the speed a little bit. You can of course use your foot control when you're doing these decorative stitches. And I'm also going to engage my pattern end. And cut. And there's my half of my angel wing. So now I'm going to go up to my machine and I'm going to press the information button. Okay, so when I press the information button, I get some other things that I can do to the stitch here and I'm gonna mirror it. And you can see here on the screen how that's flipped this wing to the other direction. So now I'm just going to focus my attention back on the foot and stitching this out. I've got my previous 
stitch out here and just like I did before I'm going to line this up lowering my presser foot and I'm going to line this up right at the edge now I'm going to stitch it out So you can see here how I made those little angel wings mirror each other and that's just a very neat decorative stitch and a technique that you can do simply by using the mirror stitch and you saw how easy that was to use. Another bank of stitches that you're going to really enjoy is the 1100 bank and those are the tassel stitches and the tassel stitches are literally meant to be tassels. In my example here you can see I've got a cute little tassel and we're going to stitch this out and I'm going to show you one. I'm just going to simply stitch a tassel and I'm going to pick stitch number 1115. So you can see this cute little stitch and see that wide stitching that it's taking? That's the tassel. So I'm just going to hit my pattern end button and then once my pattern's done it's going to stop. Cut and lift my presser foot. So here's our stitch out here of our cute little tassels but they're not quite tassels yet until we use our little magic scissors. And the way that this works is we're going to turn this upside down and we're going to trim our bobbin thread. And we're simply just going to cut that bobbin thread right at the bottom. The bobbin thread is my white thread. And there's a couple ways that we could do it. We can cut it really close to the stitching and actually cut the colorful thread on the bottom. And that's going to give us like a fluffy edge or these ones earlier that we cut will give us a loopy edge on the bottom. So let's turn that over and let's pull out our little tassels. And I just like to fluff them up with my fingers a little bit. If you need to take the rest of that bobbin thread out, you can use like a little lint roller, but look, there are tassels. Now you can see this stitch is a little bit different than the one I did on the example. The one I did on the example, I did a different tassel stitch and then I lined up another stitch right on top of it to give it a fuller look. So that is a stitch that we kind of created just on our own by making a combination stitch. So let's try another one. This time, I'm going to get rid of my combo mode. I'm just going to delete these stitches that I put in there. And I want to pick like a nice little singular design. So let's go back and see what else we've got going down in this beautiful little bank of stitches. I actually like this stitch right here. That looks perfect to me. And I'm gonna hit my little I button because I wanna stitch just one. So now I'm stitching just one. I wanna stitch just one of these. Right here in the middle of where my two stitches connect. added a little flower right into the middle of that stitch. All right, let's pick another combination of stitches to create. Well, since I talked up the holiday section so much, I thought it was only fair that I actually show some of them to you. So if you wanted to create a little trim on a napkin, a tablecloth, a hem on a holiday dress, you can just pick some of these different designs. I've got the 
tree there, the little pine tree, and maybe a reindeer, and then a pine tree again, and then maybe a stocking, and just strung a bunch of those together, and we can kind of preview what we have here as we go up the line. And see that? So now we're gonna stitch that out. Look at our cute little combination that we made. So look at all the so look at all the possibilities that you have as you stitch out your decorative stitches, as you play around with stringing combinations together, mirroring the stitches, stitching just one at a time. Honestly, the possibilities are endless. But there's one final thing I want to do that you're going to just love, love, love before we end. So what I want to show you is how you can make a little box or a frame so that you could make like a to and from tag for a present or a quilt label or something like that. And I'm going to press the heart. Now this isn't just Christmas, this has Valentine's Day, it's got some other stuff going on, but I'm going to pick these hearts. I'm going to open my little eye button and I'm going to go to pattern repeat. And I want to repeat three of these hearts so now when this stitch is out, it's going to do this section of heart, then the second section of, section of heart, then this third section of heart, and then it's going to stop. And the needle is going to land in the down position, which is going to allow me to stop and pivot. So I'm just going to start kind of in on my material like this, and I'm going to just press my button and go. And the machine is going to stitch three patterns. There's the first. The second. And we're rounding up on the third. And see how it stopped with the needle in the down position? So I can just lift and turn and repeat. And you know, you can tell I've been doing a lot of stitching. We're just gonna take a little break here always make sure that you clean off your machine. There we go. All right, now it's much prettier. So now we're ready here. And now it's gonna stitch three down this side. All right, then I'm gonna lift and pivot and come back down and aim from this side down to that corner. And look at our super cute little box that would be totally suitable for a little frame on a label, on anything. I mean, that is just really pretty cool. And I hope that you'll enjoy doing that little trick. So what are you waiting for? You don't have any excuses to try those decorative stitches now. It's going to be really fun, I promise. And you might just unleash your inner artist when you stitch some of these things out. Hey, if you want to see more videos like this, don't forget to check out our YouTube channel. It's youtube.com slash Bernina of Naperville. And we love it when you like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. It's even better when you ring the bell so you get alerts when we upload new videos like this. So in the meantime, be brave, be adventurous, do amazing things, and make something that you're proud of. We'll see you next time.